Hello, it's Malcolm Laird, Ventura Publications here. In the Pacific War, the RNZAF's roundels transitioned from being an RAF type roundel of red, white and blue in stages all the way through to being a blue, white, blue roundel with large white bars beside the roundel. This short presentation is about that shade of blue. At some stage in the future, I'll do another video on the roundels themselves and how they progressed in multiple stages through to the blue, white, blue with bar roundels that appeared on our P40s and F4U Corsairs. This slide includes a photo of squadron leader Michael Herrick sitting in the cockpit of NZ3078. Michael Herrick commanded a New Zealand fighter squadron in the Pacific War in 1943. In the photo of the port side of this aircraft, I've got a red arrow pointing to the fuselage roundel, which appears to be a medium blue, even though it's a grayscale photograph. The next two slides are colour photographs from the Pacific War, which will allow you to form a better impression of the shade of blue. This photo of an RNZAF P-40M was taken by the US Navy or Marine Corps. It shows the first incarnation of the RNZAF's roundel and bar with quite small bars adjacent to the roundel. The shade of blue appears to be a medium dark blue. Here we have a photograph of an RNZAF P-40 taking off at Torokina. My impression is that the roundels are a medium to dark blue and uh, we can see that the upper surfaces of this aircraft are well lit. So it's not like the darkish impression is caused by lack of light. This is a photograph of a derelict P-40 outside Aspen's garage, uh, which is near Rukahia in the 1960s. First thing, notice how the roundel would have been blue, white, blue near the end of its career and then there's a red dot under that and also have the area that would have been the white second ring of the fuselage roundel that's gone this greenish brown color. Uh, Charles Darby uh, spent time uh, at this junkyard and he notes about the, uh, the degradation of paint over time. He says on atmospheric oxidization the dark green turns brown and then the brown paint supports a luxurious growth of green was it so it's the color of chlorophyll um, in the you know, microbious plants whatever they might be so the next uh, slide also gives this amazing impression of the uh, the green growth which kind of confuses our color perceptions of these aircraft the second photo of a derelict P-40 at Rukahia also gives an excellent impression uh, of this luxuriant green growth that appeared uh, on, the, uh, on the aged paint. Um, we can see the New Zealand sea blue-grey colour between the roundel and the red O, uh, but forward of the D there's this green growth that's appeared. And on the second aircraft behind OD-15, we can see an aircraft with the original American star showing through the RNZF roundel and this green growth also much in evidence. Uh, Robert Montgomery, who wrote the Pacific Corsair book uh, with extra input from David Duxbury, walked around the Rukahia junkyard in the 1960s. Robert noted that under all of the OTU letter groups, in this case OD15, the New Zealand blue-grey colour was present. So um, that overall blue-grey was painted on a lot of aircraft. Now this slide shows NZ3081 operated by number 4 OTU at Ohakia, about 100 miles north of Wellington. Uh, it's in the NZ Blue Grey repaint scheme and uh, in the black and white photograph you can see there's a lot of contrast between the 
roundel's red centre dot and the main blue of the roundel. So I'm saying this is a red, white and blue roundel with a yellow ring, not a blue, white, blue uh, roundel. Uh, this slide shows a colour side illustration of NZ3220, the third Glory Alliance P40, and also two photographs from the surviving uh, airframe. Well, this actual aircraft did survive uh, and is now being restored. Um, so you get an impression of the shade of blue in the roundels. Uh, and also there's the, uh, the stencil, stencil applied um, serial number. This is a photograph up in the Pacific War Zone of NZ3220. Um, if you take a look at the roundels, you can see even in the black and white photograph, they appear to be, you know, medium sort of blue roundels. Uh, and this is standard film where yellows display as light. So if you look at the yellow ring on the fuselage roundel, it appears light. And it has the small version of Gloria with the G on the nose. So this is the first set of nose art on the third Gloria Lions. And here we have the second version of the Gloria Lions nose art on NZ3220. So it's the second version of nose art on the third Gloria Lions. This picture may well have been taken with orthochromatic film in, because the yellow ring around the fuselage roundel displays as being quite dark compared with the blue of the roundel. The subject of this photo in side view is P40N NZ3152. Uh, this may well have been taken on orthofilm as well as the fuselage yellow ring does appear quite dark. Uh, interesting to note the tail section uh, is painted with a curved demarcation between the white of the tail section and the main camouflage colours. This indicates that this photo was taken from an earlier period. It's the first style of white tail section. Uh, as time went by, the RNZF simplified the demarcation between the white tails and the rest of the fuselage. Uh, last slide. Um, this is three Ventura publications decal sheets. Uh, sh on the left is sheet V48103, which has a secondary sheet with medium blue roundel and bars for Glory Alliance. In the middle is V7277, um, and it has, they're actually slightly darker roundels and bars, but this photograph, for some reason, they display quite dark. So they're actually lighter than they display. Just couldn't seem to color correct it correctly. And on the right is V7207, which has one of the training squadron P40s. Uh, and its roundel and bars are probably too dark. So ideally a model would use the roundel and bars from V7277. So thanks for watching and hope this was, uh, hope this was useful. Uh, okay, bye for now.